Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel on Narcissists Revealed. Having you here today excites me greatly since we will be delving into a provocative and interesting issue. Without a restroom in their residence, will narcissists have contented lives? At first, this seems like an odd question, but when you consider how much the bathroom matters to someone with narcissistic tendencies, it is evident that this is not only a matter of losing a room but also of losing a fundamental component of their personal haven. Let us so investigate what happens when a narcissist loses access to their most private area. Let us start right now. First, we must recognize the special place the restroom holds in a narcissist's life before we can appreciate its importance. Often seeking constant validation, praise, and a sense of superiority. Narcissists are people who are profoundly preoccupied with their own image. Being in charge of their impressions, that of others as well as of themselves, allows them to flourish. With its natural solitude and reflecting surfaces, the bathroom offers the ideal setting for this kind of self-directed activity. For a narcissist, the bathroom serves not only for regular chores like brushing teeth or cleaning. This is a holy place where they may indulge in their self-admiration, where they can control every element of their surroundings, from the lighting to the cleanliness, and where they may participate in rites that support their self-worth and feeling of perfection. The toilet provides seclusion, a place where one may flee from the outer world and its demands, a place where one may be alone with their thoughts and introspection. The meticulously created world of the narcissist becomes more precarious without this haven. Imagine a time when a narcissist lacks a bathroom to hide away in. This is about losing control over a major part of their everyday life, not only about losing a handy area. They validate themselves in the bathroom, therefore strengthening their conviction that they are unique and where they feel most at peace with their own self-image. Without it, they have to face the outer world without the security net of their little haven. The lack of a bathroom would throw off the narcissist's capacity to follow their self-soothing rituals. Maintaining their self-image depends on these rites, which range from grooming to makeup application to simple mirror gazing. Every ritual is a reinforcing moment, a means of confirming the conviction that one is in charge, that one is flawless, that one is deserving of respect. The narcissist might begin to feel vulnerable, exposed, and out of control without the capacity to engage these rituals in the solitude of a restroom. Since for a narcissist control is everything, this loss of control is absolutely vital. To keep a feeling of superiority, they meticulously choose their image, surroundings, and contacts with others. Key component of this control is the bathroom. This is where they can make sure everything is just right, where they can look their best, feel their best, and get ready to face life. Their sense of control starts to wither without this space. Moreover, the absence of a restroom implies that the narcissist would have to depend more on the outside world for affirmation. They get most honest validation, from themselves, in the bathroom. In front of the mirror, they can strengthen their self-worth and appreciate their reflection without outside validation. Without this, individuals find themselves more often looking for approval from others, which may be taxing and aggravating. Reliance on outside validation raises the possibility of bad experiences which may be rather disturbing for narcissists since they are famously sensitive to criticism and rejection. The restroom provides a place for the narcissist to avoid the pressures of social contacts as well. Because they have to constantly perform, narcissists find social events draining even while they want for attention and praise. They may relax, be themselves, or at least the version of themselves they prefer and rejuvenate in the bathroom without having to perform. They are compelled to face the demands of social contacts more regularly without this getaway, which might cause additional stress, frustration, and worry. Furthermore, lack of a bathroom could accentuate a narcissist's fears. Though they present themselves as confident and superior, 
narcissists are typically quite insecure people. With its mirror and regulated surroundings, the bathroom offers a place where they might reaffirm themselves of their value and appeal. Those fears could surface more regularly without this space, which would cause increased anxiety and discomfort. They might grow more preoccupied with their looks, more nervous about how others view them, and more driven for approval from others. Not having a bathroom could also have psychological effects shown in more obvious actions. A narcissist who believes they have little influence over their surroundings may strive to exert control in another spheres of their life. Increased manipulation of others, more intense demands for attention, or more strict routines meant to offset the lack of their normal refuge could follow from this. Basically, when their need for control grows more evident, they could grow more challenging to live with. Moreover, for the narcissist the toilet offers a place of perfection and purity. It's where people metaphorically and physically purify themselves from the flaws they find in the surroundings and themselves. For someone who is fixated on keeping a pristine image, they could suffer with emotions of impurity or imperfection without this space, which can be rather upsetting. As they struggle to keep the high standards they set for themselves. This could cause compulsive activities or even melancholy. One other crucial factor to take into account is how the absence of a restroom will impact the relationships of the narcissist with others. The restroom is a secluded area where people might hide from social expectations and demands. Without it, they may feel more vulnerable and exposed, which would aggravate them more and maybe cause lashing out at people around them. As they get more critical or demanding, seeking to recover the sense of control and superiority they have lost. Their relationships could suffer. If there is no bathroom, a narcissist may also resort to various coping strategies to cover the void. More time spent on social media, where they can carefully shape their image and get approval from a larger audience, can be part of this. But this kind of confirmation is ephemeral and usually disappointing which fuels a cycle of searching without ever feeling really at rest. Often to the disadvantage of those close to them, they may also get increasingly fixated on other elements of their lives that they can manage, including their job or their relationships. The narcissist's capacity for introspection suffers also without a restroom. The mirror helps individuals to look at their persona as well as their appearance. Here they hone their face expressions, run through dialogues, and strengthen their identity. They might be less confident in their contacts with people without this instrument, which would cause more worry and a more want for comfort. Most narcissists find great discomfort in this since it would make them more dependent on others for validation. At last, the tranquility a narcissist discovers in the bathroom relates to their capacity to flee from reality, even if momentarily. Their imaginations can be fulfilled in the bathroom, where they can be whatever they wish to be free from the limitations of the actual world. Without this escape, individuals are compelled, which might be uncomfortable, to face the realities of their life more directly. As they try to keep the appearance of perfection without their normal refuge, the loss of this private area could cause discontent or even despair. To sum up, a narcissist is not likely to live in peace without a bathroom in their residence. For them, the bathroom is a haven where they may preserve their self-image, manage their surroundings, and flee from the pressures of the outside world, not only a place to use functionally. Without it, they would probably feel more vulnerable, more exposed, and less in control, which would raise tension and anxiety and maybe even result in more extreme narcissistic behaviors as they strive to replace their private haven. Their coping strategies revolve around the bathroom, hence without it their perfectly created world would probably fall apart. I really appreciate you keeping with me through this thorough exploration of the psychology of narcissism and the significance of the bathroom. As interesting as I found this conversation to be, Hopefully you too found it so. Remember to like, subscribe, 
and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update if you liked this video and like to learn more about the subtleties of human behavior and psychology. As always, I would also want your opinion on the concept of narcissists living without a bathroom. Drop your remarks here to help us to maintain the discussion. Take care. I will see you in the future video till next time. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Narcissist Revealed channel, where we talk about the complicated parts of relationships and how to grow as a person. If you're new, don't forget to click subscribe to become a part of our great group of doctors and students. How to get out of a relationship with a narcissist is something that a lot of people are interested in today. This movie is for you whether you're just starting to see the signs or you're very close to being free. Find a comfortable place to sit, and let's start this trip together. If you want to free yourself from a narcissist, you have to go through one of the hardest but most powerful processes. With narcissists, it's hard to tell where they end and you begin because they can weave themselves so deeply into your life. The goal of this psychological and emotional process of enmeshment is to keep you dependent on their support and validation. But realizing that you need to break free is the first strong step toward taking back your life and freedom. Recognizing a narcissist is often the first step in getting away from them. When the fog of influence starts to lift, and you can see the patterns of abuse and control for what they are, it's a moment of clarity. For years, you may have spent years making sense of their behavior or blaming yourself for the problems in the relationship. Realizing this can be shocking and painful, but figuring out how the narcissist works is very important for your recovery. Narcissists will often use a variety of tricks to keep you under their control. They might use gaslighting to make you doubt your memories and views, which could make you think you're crazy. You could be saying sorry for things you didn't do, or feeling like you have to walk on eggshells all the time to escape conflict. Narcissists also love bomb in the beginning of a relationship, giving you lots of care and affection to make you feel very close to them. This strategy is meant to make you rely on them for acceptance and validation. As soon as you notice these trends, you need to start setting limits. It's not easy to do this, especially if you've been taught to put the narcissist's wants before your own. But making limits is important if you want to get away from their control. It means standing up for your values and wants, even when people try to stop you or trick you. Some things you could say are, I need space, or I won't put up with that kind of talk. Remember that your limits are there to protect your health, not to control what the narcissist does. When you start to set limits, the narcissist will likely push back. To get you back into the loop, they might use anger or threats, love bomb you again, or try to make you feel guilty. This is where your drive and network of support really matter. Have support groups, friends, or family around you who know what you're going through and can give you the help and encouragement you need. Narcissists love it when their victims are alone, so getting back in touch with your support system is a very important step on your path. Dealing with your feelings after leaving a narcissist is one of the hardest parts of getting away from them. You might feel many things, from anger and humiliation to sadness and grief. It's important not to judge yourself when you feel these things. They are a normal part of getting better and show that you are moving forward. Writing in a journal, going to therapy, and thinking about yourself can all help you work through these thoughts and understand what you've been through. Taking care of yourself is another important part of your healing process. Narcissists often take away your physical and mental energy leaving you feeling worn out and empty. Getting your energy back and taking care of yourself can help you feel good about yourself again and make you stronger. This could mean doing things that make you happy, like working out, meditating, spending time in nature, or exploring hobbies. Remember that taking care of yourself is not selfish. It's what you need to do to get better and take back your life. Along with taking care of yourself, a key part of getting away from a narcissist is boosting your self-esteem. They are very good at making you question your skills and worth, which is called narcissism. To get back your self-esteem, you need to question the bad beliefs that others have put on you and replace them with positive, empowering thoughts. 
This could mean saying positive things to yourself every day, looking for good things to happen, and surrounding yourself with positive people who support and encourage you. You might want to look at any beliefs or habits that made you open to a narcissistic relationship in the first place while you work on boosting your self-esteem. You shouldn't blame yourself for this. Instead, see it as a chance to learn and grow. You may have learned to put other people's needs ahead of your own, or you may have trouble setting limits because of bad events in the past. You can take steps to heal and build better relationships in the future if you understand these trends. Getting away from a narcissist is not a straight-line process. Things will go wrong and problems will come up along the way. At times, you may question your choices or feel drawn to go back to the relationship. It's okay to feel this way, but it's important to remember why you started this journey in the first place. Write down the reasons you chose to leave and look at it whenever you're not sure what to do. Don't forget that healing is a process, not a goal. Learning to trust yourself again is another important part of getting away from a narcissist. Narcissists often make you doubt your own thoughts and feelings, which can make you lose touch with reality. To rebuild this trust in yourself, you need to pay attention to your gut and trust your thoughts. One way to do this is to start by making small choices and work your way up to bigger ones as your confidence grows. It's also important to know that it takes time to heal from narcissistic abuse. Be kind to yourself and give yourself time to heal at your own pace. There is no set time for mending, and each person has a different path. It's important that you're taking steps to get back your life and independence. You might start to see the world in a new way as you go along this path. Finally, getting away from a narcissist can be life-changing helping you grow and learn more about yourself. You might feel stronger, more clear-headed, and like you have a purpose again. Accept your greater freedom and use it to make your life what you really want it to be. As someone who is helping someone get away from a narcissist, you play an important part. Show them that you understand, care, and will support them as they go through this difficult process. Don't judge or give help that wasn't asked for. Instead listen and validate what they're saying. Remember that getting away from a narcissist takes a lot of bravery and your help can make a big difference in their recovery. Getting away from a narcissist is a difficult and complicated process, but it is also a trip that gives you power. It means noticing the patterns of influence, setting limits, and getting back your independence and sense of self-worth. Even though the process might be hard, it shows how strong and resilient you are. By doing these things, you're putting your health and happiness first and making your life fit with your morals and goals. Thanks so much for listening today and taking part in this important talk. Don't forget that you're not alone and that there is help out there for you on your road. If this video was helpful to you, please like it, share it with someone who could also use it, and subscribe to get more videos like this. Be careful and strong and we'll see you in the next movie.